The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live Blood London and Neogenesis Systems Live and Dry Blood Analysis Online Training Course. This is what some fitness trainers and personal trainers are saying about introducing and offering live blood analysis to their clients. It has given me a huge edge over my competition. I'm able to help clients become healthier as well as fitter. It just makes sense. I'm in the health business already and have the clients. I took a room in my gym and practiced live blood analysis along with training. I've seen some incredible results by suggesting dietary adjustments and monitoring the results. I've been utilizing blood type diet and monitoring the results by live blood analysis. The blood picture improved as my client's health improved. They are very impressed. It is an amazing experience. Everyone should have live blood analysis. So, about the course, about the training course. The course is ideal for health professionals, detox clinics, retreats, alternative complementary practitioners, fitness trainers, gyms, health resorts, and nutritionists. This comprehensive online training course will take you through everything you need to get started, including buying and setting up of all the equipment, the fascinating study of live and dry blood analysis, and everything you need to become a confident and proficient practitioner. The training course can be taken at your leisure anywhere in the world where there's an internet connection. It is presented via 12 weekly webinars, PowerPoint presentation with GoToWebinar, which will be recorded for your future reference. Online training has many advantages, including saving travel and accommodation costs to get to training centers. The study material can be referred to at any time. Manual study material reference charts and photos are provided. Students are requested to read through the week's content in their manual prior to the weekly webinar. We will require a test case for submission in the final two weeks for review and your certificate will be sent on completion of course. We provide ongoing support to help you with everything you need to get up and running in your practice. Questions are answered at the webinar and support is also provided through a private Facebook support forum where along with our support and answering questions students can get together, compare notes, help and support each other. The cost of the course is £599. To enrol, please go to www.livebloodlondon.com. If you go to the training section, you'll find how to enrol there. Otherwise, if you want to copy the link, please do. So we advise you on all the equipment needed to get you up and running with your own practice in the 12-week course. We provide all the charts, pictures, diagrams, manuals, and all of the information needed to practice live and dry blood analysis. The manual. The manuals are clearly illustrated with detailed information on the correct blood sampling techniques for both dry and live blood analysis. With 500 pages of pictures, diagrams, and detailed information on everything you will come across in your analysis, the symptoms, medical perspective, and the solutions. Here are some of the charts provided for live and dry blood analysis. Some common questions and answers. What is the legislation around using blood analysis and what qualifications are required to register for the course? Do I need to have a medical background? There is no formal regulation around live blood analysis. So in essence, anyone can add it to their practice. It is a tool used in natural health settings. So it is for pr practitioners involved in natural health. It's an ideal addition for fitness trainers, PTs, and nutritionists. It is used to detect imbalances that can be corrected through nutrition and natural products. So the more knowledge the practitioner has of nutrition and health, 
the more they and their clients will be able to benefit from live blood analysis. Does the course cover treatment? Yes, the necessary dietary and lifestyle changes, as well as specific herbal and nutritional products, are discussed under each blood anomaly. What makes this course different from other courses? Well, this course draws from a variety of researchers. Live blood in Brightfield and Darkfield is covered. Dry blood analysis is covered in detail. The course is online, interactive, recorded, and available online anytime versus workshops requiring travel and accommodation where practitioners are left with a manual lacking important information and no backup and help when they start to practice. No other course offers as much information and detail plus a huge database of images and videos. The course draws from many researchers so you're likely to encounter a lot of information that is not covered in other single courses. This has been confirmed by many clients who are looking for more information on blood analysis and found that our course helps them to use live blood analysis to its full potential. I've already done some live blood training. Will this course be helpful to me? Yes, this has been answered above. You'll find it a lot more useful information as well as all the backup you need here. What's the reason behind putting the online course together? Well, I studied live blood analysis after being introduced to it through my interest in health and fitness. I was amazed and very impressed with the power of live blood analysis and its visual impact, as well as how it motivates us to make positive changes in our lifestyle and diet, and how that results in optimum health and prevention of disease. I went off to study in the USA, and like most students, I arrived at the training center tired from the traveling and somewhat jet-lagged. The course was so much information, I found it difficult to take notes and concentrate at the same time. I couldn't do both. So the result was I arrived home with what I could remember, some scribbled notes and a manual that I discovered didn't have all the important information. It was some time before I got set up in my own practice and by that time I couldn't remember much at all. I was really struggling. So I searched online and this is where I find Dr. Ocker who was able to help me get up and running and practicing with the confidence and proficiency that I so needed. The idea behind this online training course is so that you don't have the same problem. You will have all the information, pictures, charts, diagrams and manuals needed as well as all the course material to refer to whenever you want or need. Ongoing backup and support is provided until you too get up and running and practicing with confidence and proficiency. This is the reason for the online training course. It is the first of its kind. So this is me, Elizabeth Clemens, your online course presenter. Qualified in live blood microscopy and biochemistry flow systems from Biomedics in the USA. I'm a practicing consultant for Live Blood London in central London. And this is your online training course tutor. Dr. Ocker Botha, founder of Neogenesis Systems, registered homeopathic doctor with a master's degree in homeopathy, certified in advanced applied microscopy and the New Life Sciences certificate from New Life Sciences. And what is live blood analysis? Well, live blood analysis is a procedure whereby a tiny pinprick of blood is taken from the finger using a sterile disposable Lancet. This is the same procedure as used for measuring glucose levels. This tiny blood sample is mounted onto a slide and covered. It is then viewed using a dark field, bright field microscope. The image is magnified to a thousand times, can be viewed by the client and the practitioner via a camera and a computer screen. The screen shows a picture of the red and white blood cells, platelets, etc moving in the plasma fluid. Here are some examples below. The procedure. The practitioner explains what is being viewed and compares it to the pictures and charts of healthy blood and points out any potential issues. These observations are cross-referenced with existing medical conditions or any signs or symptoms. 
For example, if one sees evidence of irritation in the bowel, the patient will often report symptoms of irritable bowel, such as bloating, gas, and alternating diarrhea and constipation. The apparent symptoms often support and confirm the observations made in the blood. Who is live blood analysis for? Well, live blood analysis is suitable for anyone who wants to unlock the secrets of their inner health. It provides a window into your body and allows you to see what effect your diet and lifestyle has on your inner self. It is a very motivating tool and provided positive changes are made, there is a visual improvement in the blood on follow-up consultations. Live and dry blood analysis looks at possible indications of absorption of nutrients, toxicity levels, leaky gut syndrome, food allergies, bacterial infections, viral infection, parasitic infections, liver function and absorbing digesting fat, nutrient deficiencies, folate, B12 and iron, inflammation in the body, insulin resistance, cholesterol and oxidative stress. The procedure is simple and easy to follow. We provide pictures of healthy blood cells for comparison as well as charts and pictures of unhealthy imbalances for reference and comparison. So here is an example of a normal healthy blood under the microscope. The red blood cells are all roughly the same size and their shapes are regular and circular as pictured. The red blood cells, when healthy, look uniformly round and they float freely in the plasma, bouncing off each other. When the blood looks this way, it usually means that the red cells can move freely and easily carry oxygen throughout the body. This is a very good sign for the immune system because cancer, viruses and germs don't thrive when there is plenty of oxygen. Now here's a comparison. On the left we see healthy round blood cells compared to the picture on the right where we see some evidence of proechylocytes, bottle cap shaped uh, red blood cells and some protein linkage. That's the lemon shaped red blood cells. Here's an example of protein linkage, the lemon shaped red blood cells. We see lemon shaped red blood cells that appear to be linked by a fine strand. Any protein linkage observed is a in a sample is significant. The more cells displaying protein linkage and the more fields this is observed in, the more the emphasis should be on correcting this condition. So the associated symptoms, poor appetite or heavy bloated sensation after eating or getting full very quickly, heartburn, indigestion or reflux after eating, abdominal discomfort, bloating, flatulence, especially getting worse during the course of the day, constipation, diarrhea, fatigue, shortness of breath. The ability of red blood cells to transport gases is compromised here. The implications are impaired, dig impaired digestion. This condition most often indicates excess protein in the blood due to poor, poor protein digestion and assimilation. This stems from either excess dietary protein or from an underactive exocrine pancreas, low proteolytic enzyme production. Other causes may include stress, coffee, carbonated, caffeinated drinks, excess meat, or refined sugar. Also, keep in mind that hormonal imbalances in both men and women may lead to protein linkage. So always ask about oral contraceptives, hormone replacement therapy, or prostate symptoms, and refer to the reproductive ring in the layered dry blood sample. More of that in the course. The interventions reduce intake of dietary animal protein to one gram per kilogram of body weight per day, e.g. a 70 kilogram adult should not exceed 70 grams of animal protein daily. Do not consume animal protein and simple starch in the same meal. Eat meals while sitting down. Do not rush while eating. Remember to chew properly. Follow the diet relevant to the blood type. Avoid caffeine, stop smoking, increase water intake. To determine necessary water intake daily in litres, weight in kilograms divided by 8 times 0 0.25 should give you your necessary daily water intake. A combination of the following can be suggested. Digestive enzymes taken with meals. 
betaine hydrochloride with pepsin taken with meals, herbal bitters, e.g. gentiana, taken before meals. The following is a very effective formula to stimulate digestive enzyme, bile and HCL, hydrochloric acid, secretion. Gen gentian, calamus, dandelion, centauri, aniseed, mugwort, and licorice. TCM, uh, not very good at pronouncing this, Sijun Zitang, Bao He Wan, vitamin B6, vitamin B3, as a non-flush niacin, 1000 milligrams daily. Niacin helps to remove excess protein and saturated fat from the body and stimulates hydrochloric acid production by the stomach and trace minerals. So, working with protein linkage, the majority of patients with significant protein linkage have an underlying problem with protein digestion. It may be due to excessive intake of protein where the body is unable to produce sufficient enzymes to adequately digest the protein or an underproduction of proteolytic enzymes by the body so that even a moderate amount of dietary protein is not being digested. So always ask the client about his her protein intake and advice to restrict this to one gram per kilogram of body weight per day. Vegetarians may have protein linkage due to low enzyme production and consumption of certain vegetable proteins that may be difficult to digest. In most cases, digestive enzymes, vitamin B3 and vitamin, vitamin B6 are indicated. So we hope that this has given you a good example of the process of live blood analysis, the procedure and what's involved. During an analysis, the practitioner asks questions relating to lifestyle and dietary factors that may be related to the signs observed in the blood. The practitioner also mentions the symptoms that can be expected, e.g. protein linkage, ask about the diet, digestive system, eating habits, mention that it, it is a sign of digestive imbalance. He, she, uh, the practitioner then explains to the client that correcting the condition of their blood requires specific changes in diet and lifestyle, as well as specific herbal nutritional products. He, she, the practitioner then focuses on one or two primary imbalances that need to be corrected. Those imbalances that may have led to the development of some of the other imbalances detected and those imbalances directly related to their symptoms. The practitioner emphasizes the importance of long-term lifestyle changes as opposed to a quick fix. The practitioner also emphasizes the importance of following up to assess the changes and determine the next step. When clients return for a follow-up, they are shown their previous blood analysis pictures before seeing the new results, then the improvements are compared and discussed with them. It is suggested that clients have a follow-up appointment one, two or three months after the original appointment in order to gauge their progress and then an annual checkup is advised. This helps the practitioner and client to detect changes in the blood that may indicate early stages of imbalances, inflammation and possible disease. So the observations seen in the blood under the microscope reveal a characteristic footprint which can be seen in similar cases and thus can indicate certain generalized imbalances and pathologies. Blood analysis is without doubt a most useful clinical aid for both identifying imbalances and then monitoring a patient's progress after making changes to address the imbalance. It is encouraging and motivational as one can observe the blood being uh, begin to reflect short and long-term change for the better. When a patient sees their blood live on a screen, the response can be very profound, often resulting in motivation and or determination to find out more and achieve a good healthy picture reflecting good health. Dry blood analysis. This is often called an oxidative stress test. It uses the same procedure with some blood taken from the same pinprick, left to dry on a slide for a time, and then viewed using the bright field setting on the microscope. So the blood, why is it important? Your blood could be viewed as the river of life. It's the substance that carries oxygen, 
water and nutrients to all of your organs and tissues. It therefore makes perfect sense that imbalances seen in the blood will affect the organs and tissues, leading to malfunction and imbalance. If the red blood cells are anything other than perfect in shape, structure, flexibility <clears throat> and fluidity, then their ability to travel around the body and deliver the vital level of oxygen and nutrients is severely compromised. This translates into low energy production, fatigue and a general sense of feeling unwell. There are obviously many degrees of this. The quality of the blood is vital to a healthy, disease-free <coughs> body, <coughs> and this is dependent on correct nutrition and lifestyle. Every second of every day, the trillions of cells within the body absorb nutrients and oxygen from the blood and excrete acid wastes in the process of metabolism. Diet and lifestyle dramatically affect the cellular health, either positively or negatively. <coughs> if, <coughs> if our body is due to being acidic, have to work harder in order to keep the blood at the slightly alkaline level, the 7.365, then we feel sick and tired. Blood, which is an important organ of life, must stay at an almost exact pH of 7.365. The body will do anything to maintain this level and will rob the body of calcium in order to stay that way. This causes imbalances in health. Healthy cells can only survive in an environment that maintains an optimum pH level. Think of fish in a fish tank. We spend much time and effort making sure that the water they swim in is clean, well oxygenated and at the correct acidity, alkalinity balance. If we did the same for our own bodily system, we may be able to avoid all sorts of disease. So returning the blood and the body to its healthy state <coughs> Blood cells can be likened to fish in a fish tank. If the fish get sick, then cleaning the water they swim in is a sensible first option. Healthy cells live in a healthy environment, i.e. one free of pollutants, harmful bacteria, parasites, etc. Healthy cells, as we said, can only survive in an environment that maintains an optimum pH. With live blood analysis, <clears throat> one can assess the terrain in which the cells are floating. For example, if the terrain is too acidic, then the red cells will behave in a way which will compromise their ability to circulate freely around the body and deliver oxygen. This phenomenon is called rouleau and shows the red cells sticking together in chains. As some capillaries are only one cell in diameter, the red cells cannot deliver their vital talk at cargo of oxygen to the tissues. This naturally leads to fatigued muscles, lack of energy, brain fog and many other symptoms. The body is equipped with many mechanisms to enable it to maintain the blood in a pure and healthy state. These are the elimination channels and filtering organs. These consist of the lymph, liver, kidneys, lungs, bowels and skin. The efficiency of these channels can alter over time and is perfectly illustrated by the changes observed as a human grows from a baby with a very pure and untarnished bloodstream, dependent of course on the nutrition of the mother during pregnancy and weaning, to that of a teenager with acne and then on to middle age where the body is developing signs of toxicity and aging. The history of live blood analysis. The history of live blood analysis goes back more than a hundred years to the works of prominent scientists Antoine Béchamp, Professor Gunther Enderlein and Claude, Claude Bernard. It was their work that would advance the use of the microscope, challenge the medical establishment of the day and propose new ways of interpreting what was being viewed in blood. These prominent scientists of their day adhered to the principle of pleomorphism, pleo meaning many, morph meaning form, which from their extensive research showed them that microorganisms or microorganisms have the capacity, given the correct environment, to change in form. They believe that disease is a general condition of one's internal environment, one's inner terrain. We all understand the principles of healthy flora bacteria in our digestive tract, 
throughout our body and in our blood, there are also microforms. For the most part, they stay in check, but if the environment for them becomes right, if the body is acidic and anaerobic, then they can become harmful and cause an imbalance. This work was carried on by other prominent scientists, namely microbiologist Gaston Neesons, Dr. Virginia Livingston Wheeler, and today by Dr. Robert O. Young, who has written several books on the subject. There is a, a reason why this science is not more widely known. Because at the same time that pleomorphism was being researched, a French chemist, Louis Pasteur, came up with an alternative theory known as the germ theory of disease. His belief was that specific unchanging types of bacteria caused specific diseases. Now, Louis Pasteur was a wealthy, influential, charismatic character with many connections in medical as well as other influential circles. Pasteur formulated the germ theory by stealing Antoine Béchamp's theory of pleomorphism. It is Pasteur's germ theory that has been adopted by Western medicine and the theory taught in medical schools to this day. On his deathbed, Louis Pasteur is reputed to have said, Bernard was correct, I was wrong. The microbe germ is nothing. The terrain, the milieu, is everything. There are many variations of this recant, but the essential admission is intact. The damage had been done. Bernard was Claude Bernard, who was a French physiologist. Historian Bernard Cohen of Harvard University called Bernard one of the greatest of all men of science. Among many other accomplishments, he was one of the first to suggest the use of blind experiments to ensure the objectivity of scientific observations. He was the first to define the term Milo interior, known now as homeostasis. It is Pasteur's germ theory that has been adopted by Western medicine and the theory taught in medical schools to this day, even though Louis Pasteur admitted it is erroneous. Pleomorphism can be clearly demonstrated when viewing live blood cells. Béchamp and Bernard stated that it was all about the internal environment within the blood and that bacterium was a consequence of a polluted environment. Just as rats and vermin appear when rubbish is dumped because they wish to feed off it. Bacteria exist all around us, yet we do not get sick all the time because we have immune systems that recognize these organisms and remove them from the body. But when the body becomes acidic or toxic, similar to the rubbish dump, however, then becomes a fertile soil for bacteria, yeast and mold, and hence disease. The other reason that Pasteur's theory was accepted by the then medical fraternity was because it meant huge revenues for pharmaceutical drug companies at the time. Béchamp's theory was rejected because it meant that the individual would have to take responsibility for their own health by choosing the correct nutritional habits and lifestyle and there was no money to be made from that. The medical fraternity therefore deemed Béchamp's theory as unscientific, claiming that Pasteur's theory could be consistently demonstrated. Pasteur's theory has since been shown to be faulty because we now have antibiotic resistance strains of bacteria and at the same time vindicating Béchamp who said that the bacteria or microzyma could not be killed as it will only change or mutate. So live blood microscopy is now an alternative examination routinely practiced by holistic medical, osteopathic chiropractic and naturopathic physicians, as well as other healthcare professionals around the world, to provide an insightful view of the biological terrain. Dr. Robert O. Young has extended the work carried out with live and dry blood analysis with nearly two decades of research, in particular his findings on the use of the mycotoxic oxidative stress test, dry blood testing, have resulted in major advances of understanding. Dry blood analysis. In the 1920s, European medical practitioners added another twist 
to unconventional microscopy when they began looking at dried blood samples, later called the oxidative stress test. The dry blood spot is considered to be a hologram of the human body, a little like the eye in iridology. The different rings in the sample represent a different part of the body. Therefore, wherever the abnormality appears in the blood spot tells us approximately where the problem is occurring in the body. Another important aspect of this test is that each spot represents a time frame. The first and largest spot of blood taken reflects the current day. The latter spots provide a reflection of the patient's health many months or even years ago and can highlight the deeper seated or chronic issues underlying the client's current symptoms. It has been the observations of many researchers that as a person heals, it's always the first and largest blood spot on the slide that corrects itself towards the healthy sample first, followed by the second and then the third, etc., etc., over a period of months as the patient's health problems reverse. The patterns that form are observed under the microscope. These patterns provide us with insights into the imbalances present in the organs and systems of the body. These observations are cross-referenced with existing medical conditions or signs and symptoms. The resulting patterns seen in the dry blood under microscope bright field setting reveal a characteristic footprint which can be seen in similar cases and thus can be predictive of certain generalized pathologies. For instance, cases, for instance, cases of advanced degenerative disease show very poor clotting and minimal fibrin formation, with many white puddles appearing throughout the sample. In contrast, a healthy control subject's blood shows a tight fibrin-rich clotting pattern with no white puddles. In the 1930s, the head of surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital, Dr. H. L. Bowlen, MD, introduced the dry blood test to America. Dr. Bowlen learned the dry test from President Dwight D. Eisenhower's physicians, Drs. Heitland and Lagarde. In the 1970s, one of Heitland and Lagarde's students, Dr. Robert Bradford of the American Biolo Bio Biologics Hospital in Mexico, began teaching other practitioners how to perform this test. So there is now over 70 years of dry blood testing data by hundreds of healthcare practitioners worldwide. Although live and dry blood analysis have been in existence for many years, their practice and acceptance in the mainstream of medicine is still very much underestimated or neglected altogether. This is not being taught at medical school is the main reason for this. GPs don't have the time or inclination to study further when they are often bogged down with administration and an ever-increasing increasing patient load. So the history of live and dry blood analysis is a fascinating one and worthy of further research. It has been adopted by many eminent researchers over the last hundred years. To conclude, we know what the healthy optimum blood samples should look like, and we know what is not healthy. Most people are somewhere in between. Achieving perfect blood is not always the answer to everyone's ailments, but it can, in the long term, go some way towards correcting problems and maintaining good health for many years to come. In addition to this, knowing one has optimum blood provides for a certain degree of confidence and peace of mind, safe in the knowledge that they are less likely to succumb to some chronic illness. Periodic monitoring of blood provides insights into the nutritional or lifestyle changes necessary to maintain healthy blood and thus a healthy body. It is important to point out that live and dry blood analysis is not a diagnostic tool and will not say whether one has this or that disease. It will, however, identify and illuminate the balances which are leading to or have already led to a worsening of the current condition. This observation process tends to involve the patient more closely in their own unique physiological makeup and therapy and increases personal interest in their own health program. Blood analysis is without a doubt 
the most useful clinical tool for both identifying imbalances and then monitoring a patient's progress. It is both encouraging and motivational for practitioner and patient alike, as both can observe together the blood begin to reflect short and long-term changes for the better. So if you'd like to know more, please go for more information on live blood analysis to www.livebloodlondon.com. And if you have any questions, please email us at info at livebloodlondon.co.uk. Thank you for joining us.